In the Linux community, there's a very common way of seeing things. When you get started with Linux, you start with a desktop environment. And when you're more comfortable, you move on to a tiling window manager and you ascend to another plane of existence where productivity is insane and you don't even need a mouse. And still, I personally do not use a tiling window manager, even though I started using Linux in 2006. And there are plenty of use cases for which it's just not better than a regular desktop. So today I wanted to finally give a look at styling window managers, at why you would want to use one, and at why I will personally probably never do so. And also at this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and chances are you all know what Squarespace is, but if you don't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to create and run your own website. Squarespace has all the tools you need to start your website, improve it, even without knowing anything about code. They have pre-made layouts that you can customize heavily in terms of the colors, of block placement, just by drag and drop, it's really easy to use. You can create all your pages, but you also have plenty of modules, like anything you need to run a store, complete with online payment. You have a members only area, you have a logo creator, you can even buy your own domain name that you will need to have a serious website straight from Squarespace. So they're your all-in-one platform to let you create and run that website. So to get started with Squarespace, just click the link in the description or head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment and you'll get 10% off your first website. So window managers, they manage your windows, yeah? All desktop environments provide a window manager, you need one. It's in charge of displaying your windows, of handling their position and state, as in maximized, minimized, the size of the window, the currently focused one, and everything along those lines. But on top of these window managers that are baked in the desktops, like Mutter for GNOME or Kwin for KDE, you have tiling window managers that can basically replace your entire desktop environment shell and leave you with a completely different experience. In the X11 era, there were a ton of these. Stuff like i3, Awesome WM, BSPWM, Xmonad, Qtile, Rat Poison, and a lot more. In the Wayland era, there are a lot less because, well, it's way harder to write a window manager for Wayland since you have to re-implement all the protocols. So either you use an already made implementation and tweak just a few things, or you have to write something huge from scratch. The most well-known for Wayland would be Hyperland or Sway, but there are a bunch of others in various states of completion. Now, these styling window managers offer a different way of using your computer. Instead of having free-floating windows, everything you open is placed in a tile, being a fraction of your screen that can be the entirety of it, a half, a quarter, or any other rectangular shape that you define yourself. This means that you do not have to manage dragging windows everywhere to see what you'd like to see. You don't have to handle minimizing or restoring windows. Everything just uses the space you want and is visible at the same time. And this combines really well with virtual desktops because you can basically set groups of apps that are all visible and well-placed at the same time for different virtual desktops. It's very efficient. Now you can also generally do everything with keyboard shortcuts, like moving a window to another tile, resize those tiles, switch focus from one window to another, so your hands don't have to leave the keyboard much. And since most of these styling window managers can be customized heavily, you can set them up exactly how you like them. No more mouse, no more inefficiencies. And your regular desktop environments also have taken a page from their book because in the past five, six or 10 years, there's basically no good desktop that hasn't implemented some way of dragging a window to an edge of the screen and have it use half of your screen or maximize it by dragging it to the top. And other desktops even have hybrid features. PopOS, for example, starts in free floating mode where you'll drag your window with a mouse, but you can switch it to auto tiling when you're basically using a tiling window manager, but with all the desktop environment goodness that you're used to. Each new window will occupy some space on screen and some windows can be left floating if you need that. So if even those desktop environments are stealing features from tiling window managers, they must be doing something right. Now, not all tiling window managers will behave the same. Some are manual tilers, some are dynamic. 
Manual tilers will basically open each new window where you tell it to, to the right, to the top, to the left or the bottom of the currently focused window. Dynamic tilers, on the other hand, will open each new window following something that you define, a specific layout. For example, always using the space on the right side of the screen by resizing the windows that are already there, or always doing that on the top half of the screen, or following the golden ratio where each new window is a precise fraction of the one that was opened before. And of course, most tiling window managers let you change the size of each section of the screen as you need. So basically you have plenty of options and they're doing something right because even desktop environments are now trying to implement some of these features. KDE even has a brand new complete tiling mode that started in 5.27. So tiling window managers let you save some screen space, they let you avoid using the mouse too much so your hands can stay on the keyboard, and they're generally keyboard driven, which means they're viewed as more efficient. So let's look at why you would want to use these. So the first obvious advantage is that you never get anything overlapping anything else, unless you actively want to do so. On a regular desktop, you will always, inevitably at some point, end up with plenty of open windows that float on top of another. You will have to move them out of the way, close them, or minimize them, or resize them, and this is basically wasted time. It's time not spent using the computer and accomplishing something. It's time spent organizing the workspace to get to the thing you want to do. Now this wasted time still exists with tiling window managers, but it's generally deferred to the beginning of when you start using it. You configure it once and then all your windows will open exactly how you want them and you will basically never really have to bother with that. Now of course we all know this isn't true because you're gonna keep messing with your configuration over and over and over, but you get the point. Now the second advantage of tiling window managers is that they sort of remove the need to use the mouse or the touchpad 99% of the time. The only time you will probably need to use it is to interact with the contents of the window itself, like clicking a link in the web browser or clicking a button in a window. And sure, you can do all that using the keyboard as well, but I dare anyone to tell me that it's more efficient to hunt for a specific link in a web page in a web browser using the keyboard than with using a mouse. It's not, it's really not. Now this still reduces the time spent moving your hands from one peripheral to another, and it can even reduce muscle strain and fatigue as you're not moving your arms all around from your keyboard to your mouse all the time. You can still use the mouse if you want to, but you don't have to use it as much once you've memorized the keyboard shortcuts. Now that's a common misconception about tiling window managers. Some people seem to think that you have to throw your mouse in the bin to use a tiling WM. That's not the case. You can still use the mouse with virtually every window manager out there. You just don't need to use it. Now, another advantage is resource usage. A tiling window manager generally doesn't bring with it a whole system of panels, of overviews, of app grids, menus, effects, and more. A lot of them will come with a main panel with access to notifications, the time, a virtual desktop switcher, or even a task manager. But this is generally reduced to its simplest form, meaning that you don't load as many things in memory as with a complete desktop. Now this can be endlessly debated on whether a tiling window manager will actually save some resources, on whether some desktops are more efficient than others, but basically since you're using just a window manager, it's inevitably going to be lighter than using a full-on desktop environment with all its panels and its little helpers and demons running in the background. Now a big advantage is also screen usage. Without a big panel and a dock, tiling windows always uses the most space available on your screen. Add to that the fact that you no longer really need a title bar for your windows because you don't really need to move them around and you're also saving vertical space on each window. Basically, whether you have one single window open or 10 on the same screen, the only wasted space is the panel the window manager might display and the gaps between windows, which you can generally reduce to zero if you hate legibility and your eyesight. The end result is that you never just have an empty part of your desktop showing a pretty wallpaper. You always have the maximum amount of space dedicated to your applications, which are what you're using your computer for technically. So with so many advantages, why am I and a lot of other people not just using a tiling window manager? I mean, I'm dumb, but I'm no dumber than the average Linux user, and I can certainly memorize a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. 
Well, the reasons are many. The first one, not everyone will agree with, I am a sucker for consistency. I like using things as they were designed, looking how they were designed to look, and with the feature set that they came with. This is why I like desktop environments. They give you an entire suite of tools, settings, apps, and a desktop to handle all of it. I do not want to have a hybrid graphical thing that is just a pile of components and apps duct taped together. I want a consistent, thought out interface, and that's what Linux desktop environments give me. And I am not saying that tiling window managers are unstable or badly written or make a mess of your system. They are just not the thing that is shipped with the desktop and I want to use the desktop. Second reason is simple. Most desktops already give me enough of the tiling features to suit my personal use case. Using KDE or GNOME, I can already tile my windows if I want to. I can drag them to any corner or edge and have them use that screen space. In KDE, I even have a full tiling manager that I never use because I don't need it. Sure, this edge tiling does not give you as much flexibility as a full tiling window manager, but for me personally, it's actually better because my default use case isn't five, six, or seven windows that will overlap. It's very specific because I make videos, which means I have two modes, research and writing mode and video editing mode. In the first, I only need two windows, a browser for research and QO notes to write. Sometimes I'll have a virtual machine as well, but tiling this on a laptop display just doesn't work. It's way too small, so I open it full screen on a virtual desktop. A tiling window manager just doesn't help with this use case. It doesn't do more than what I need, and its default state is actually worse than the default state of my desktop. In editing mode, I have my video editor, DaVinci Resolve, in full screen. Again, not something a tiling window manager would help me with. And now you might be saying that a tiling window manager would help me save some screen real estate compared to KDE. But no, not really, because my panel auto hides behind windows, so it doesn't take any space. And while I do have title bars, I also don't have gaps between my windows when they're tiled or between a window and a screen edge. So I'm actually pretty sure it's the exact same screen space usage as with a tiling window manager. But what about mouse usage? It is inefficient to use your mouse to drag a window to a specific corner to tile it or untile it. Well, first, I do have keyboard shortcuts to do that in a desktop environment. They all have that. And second, I like using a mouse to handle windows. It creates a connection with my computer and the system. It reacts to my exact movements compared to pressing a shortcut and seeing a part of my screen just jump somewhere without any animation or movement. I am a visual guy. I like my things to react in real time and to see where they're going and why. And mouse usage does that for me. And I also don't lose out on configuration options, at least on KDE. I can change all the shortcuts if I want to. I can change how windows open by default. They remember their previous size. It just works for my workflow. And finally, the main reason is that most of the time I work on a laptop. It's a 16 inch screen, but it's still a laptop. And so having more than two windows tiled side by side makes things way too small to be usable for me. So to conclude, a tiling window manager is a fantastic tool to use your computer. If you have a lot of windows open regularly, if you only interact with one or two apps at the same time, I'm of the mind that a tiling window manager is actively detrimental to your use case because its default state is worse than the default state of using floating windows. And I don't think there's a big gap to learn how a tiling window manager works because yes, most people will be educated on floating windows because most people started using computers using windows, which doesn't have a tiling window manager, but it's not hard to relearn all of this. It makes sense pretty quickly if you pick your tiling window manager right. But for me personally, and for a lot of other users, a tiling window manager is just not the right choice and it should not be pushed onto everyone as the end-all be-all of productivity. If you don't use a tiling window manager and someone is trying to tell you you're stupid or a noob because you prefer floating windows, that person is an idiot. So that will be it for this one, but I can't let you leave without telling you about our sponsor, Tuxedo. 
If you're looking for a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, you should stop buying computers that come with Windows pre-installed and trying to retrofit Linux on top of it, crossing your fingers for everything to work right and trying to find online help and utilities to fix the problems. You should just buy something that comes with Linux out of the box. And that's what Tuxedo does. They offer laptops, desktops and NUCs with Linux pre-installed and all the hardware has been picked specifically because it is compatible with Linux, meaning that you can either select one of the distros that they offer, or you can just slap your own and have everything work out of the box. They have a big range that should fit every price point and every need, all the devices are very customizable, including the keyboard layout or even your own logo engraved on the lid of your laptop. And you can open, repair and upgrade all of their laptops. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it, just click the link in the description below and grab something from Tuxedo. They are really, really good. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments or by clicking the like, the subscribe button or the little notification bell thingy. And if you disliked it, there's always that thumbs down button and it's probably because you're a Tiling Window Manager user. And if you want to support the channel, there are plenty of links in the description of the video to do just that. Patreon members and YouTube members also get access to a daily Linux and open source news podcast. So check that out if you're interested. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!